Let's now look at one of the biggest topics of our time, artificial intelligence or AI. Is Africa ready to fully embrace this revolution? Last week, the European Parliament voted in favor of regulating the use of artificial intelligence. It's the world's first legal framework for AI, which aims to protect people against threats to health and safety, while at the same time advancing the technology. Across Africa, the adoption of AI technologies is facing challenges, including lack of technical skills, government policies and ethics. Now, a few African countries have taken the steps to develop policies and strategies focused on advancing the use of artificial intelligence. We'll soon discuss the challenges and opportunities with an expert in the field. But first, let's look at how the growing technology is already being used in a country like Ghana. Here's our correspondent, Isaac Kaleji. Flying robots powered by artificial intelligence being deployed in a farm in Ghana's capital, Accra. The drones are being used to assess these cashew crops. The images they capture are processed with a machine learning tool to detect pests and diseases so farmers can take steps to prevent their crops from serious damage. Once they, they get this, they know exactly what is wrong in the farm, not that they have to go and scout and try to figure out what is wrong. With this, they can just, the application pinpoint exactly what is wrong, a biotic, whether it's disease, whether it's pest that is uh, disturbing the farm, then they can control it. Healthcare is another area where this new technology has huge potential, and Kolebo Teaching Hospital in the capital is tapping into this. Here, an AI platform designed by Minu Health is helping healthcare workers read X ray images more effectively. The system facilitates faster and more accurate diagnosis using the workload for radiologists. It picks the diagnosis faster it a lot of work can be done within a short time reporting time is very markedly reduced when you are using ai systems yeah. with a shortage of health workers in many hospitals the developers of the mino health platform want their ai tool to fill the gaps um, lack of enough equipment and um, enough facilities um, to process all this data um, makes the introduction of technology and artificial intelligence critical. And the only way we can actually catch up with the rest of the world is to leapfrog, and this creates a platform for us to leapfrog. Benjamin Norte is one of the leading roboticists in the country. He is showcasing his newly built AI-powered robot called Cello. His robot is programmed to be a personal assistant of a sort. It can answer questions or even help you take your medications at the right times. Cello can be used in several places where there is, you know, that social interaction. For example, within healthcare, you can use Cello to, you know, assist the elderly. Um, within the customer service environment, you can actually place or position Cello there to perform, um, you know, guide people who come around the supermarket, you know, display prices. This new technology is seen by many as a way to boost economies and create new jobs. And Ghana wants to have a bite of that. But there are fears that existing jobs could be at risk. Generally, people should be willing to upskill and then, uh, yeah, upskill themselves, learn new skills, learn how to use AI system. How would AI help make your job easier? You need to start leveraging those stuff. And so once you do that, the, the threat of, you know, job displacement is minimal, again, at least in the next few years. In the meantime, these developers keep pursuing new ideas and solutions they believe can change their fortunes for many on the African continent. To help us dig into the future of AI in Africa, I'm now joined by Professor Anish Kurian from AI Institute of South Africa at Chwane University of Technology. Hello, sir. Thanks for your time. Now, we've just looked at how a country like Ghana is embracing the use of AI in all aspects of life. How big an opportunity is AI for the continent? 
Well, uh, looking at the potential of artificial intelligence in society, uh, there's a lot of opportunity uh, in uh, various sectors of society uh, and across Africa. I think this is the viewpoint of uh, various sectors, uh, both from industry, government, and uh, the academic community, and uh, pretty much in the South African context. Uh, this has been the primary objective in setting up uh, this newly established institute, which is driven by the government primarily uh, and focuses on seeing how as a country as at large and I believe this would be also uh, you know the story of extending it into uh, the African continent uh, is to see how technologies like AI can be grasped to advance the course of human development and global interest I mean yeah, so. there's clearly a lot of uh, there's clearly a lot of excitement about AI but like any innovation, there is the good, the bad, and the ugly. What should we be most concerned about? As with any technologies that have basically become part of society in the last uh, few decades, uh, there always has to be caution when adopting these technologies because of the potential risk. Uh, a lot of these technologies uh, integrate uh, with mainstream society, and there's always the potential of misuse and potential risks that emanate from the uncontrolled utilization of uh, these technologies. So uh, in general, I think uh, um, we all face with uh, the potential risks that are associated with a lot of these technologies. Mm. So there must be regulation. You know, the fundamentally, mm. this is a need. They, uh, you need to have laws that govern first the adoption of technologies and the control. Uh, talking about what we should be concerned about, there are also concerns globally about biases in AI systems. How important is it for Africa to be involved in AI development to ensure that technology is more representative and fair? I'm talking about face recognition. I'm talking about the kind of language used in AI. I'm talking about the history, the culture, all of those things. How important is that? Well, on two fronts, uh, to answer your question, uh, um, uh, there's definitely this need for uh, regulation uh, from the element of uh, uh, harnessing or protecting the rights of individuals uh, from the risk point of view. But from another element, uh, definitely to uh, overcome some of the biases that potentially arise uh, from the utilization of these technologies, it's quite crucial to have different frameworks and laws that govern uh, the, the adoption of AI-based technology. So uh, as you mentioned earlier, you know, the, uh, the, the EU governments that brought about uh, AI uh, laws into, into being was mainly driven by this, you know, that uh, there are a lot of potential biases that potentially could uh, uh, risk uh, sectors of society and uh, create even further biases in, in separation and disadvantaging uh, at large. I, I use the example of awarding of uh, mortgages uh, by banks, which was one of the examples that were highlighted where biases were created in the selection or awarding of uh, of mortgages based on uh, on the background of the individual, for example, uh, which could uh, be seen as disadvantaging certain sectors based on the orientation or, uh, you know, the demographics of an individual. So I'm using that as an example. Uh, the second okay. point for me in ensuring that we are able to bring about impact as Africa, as a continent, is obviously to capacitate. We need to be able to capacitate our society to be involved in innovation and development in AI and bring about our own contextualization of AI-based solutions that are relevant to the African continent. Uh, for example, language-based services in South Africa, for example, uh, uh, one of our telecommunication providers is providing uh, chatbots that respond in many of the local dialects, as an example, uh, that uses AI as the uh, you know, technology to support that. I've been using that as an example. That can only come about if we empower our society and our developers and our uh, young uh, programmers to be able to be aware of these technologies okay. and to be able to bring local context to some of these solutions.
Okay, Professor Anish Kurian from AI Institute of South Africa at Twane University of Technology. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time.